His fingers were fat and greasy with the oils of the fries he was eating. His face had flaps of fat sticking out like tires. Stop staring, Roxanne. My boss, Mr. Tamara, muttered from behind the counter. Who is this guy? Why does he eat like that? He came in here about two weeks ago. Ever since, he's been here for every single day, for every single meal, eating McDonald's. I joined a few days ago, and this was the first time I was seeing him. Most of the time, I help in the kitchen. Well, I wouldn't say it's a job, really. Not a proper one. Working at McDonald's is hardly a job, but I needed money, and this was the first one I'd found. How does he eat so much? He records them right here and then goes home. I think he vomits the food out once he reaches home. He later uploads those videos on YouTube. Ew, who would want to watch him eat? I don't know. Other psychos like him? He eats so much food here, everyone calls him the hungry man. The next day, I was watching the counter as Mr. Tamara went for a break. I was writing a check when I dropped my pen. I looked back, picking it up. There he was. The hungry man stared down at me. Beads of drooling sweat trailed down his forehead, making their way down to his cheeks, where an uneven beard lay, which was disgusting. Bits and pieces of food were stuck inside it. Um, oh, uh, what, what do you need, mister? I would like three Grand Max and four milkshakes. Oh, whatever you have. Also, three large fries. Please, hurry. I'm very hungry. Yes, I'll get it right now. He put a hundred dollar bill on the counter and said, Keep the change. Then patiently waited while I went to the back and asked one of my co-workers to get the meal all while trying to remove the sickly sweet smell of his breath from my lungs. As I waited for his order, I could see him eyeing me up and down. Minutes later, I went to his table to put his meal. He was recording himself on the phone. I placed the food in front of him and said, I hope you enjoy your meal. The man smiled and pointed to the camera, saying, Say hi to my followers, sweetie. They'll be loving it. He put me in the frame and started recording me. Um, sir, please stop recording. Come on, don't you girls love fame? You would even end up stripping for me if I paid you a hundred dollars. What the hell did you just say? I flipped the tray filled with food and milkshakes on him. His clothes were drenched in milk and ketchup. He got up, screaming. Are you crazy? You ruined my video, you witch! I grabbed a fork, all ready to teach him a lesson, but my boss, Mr. Tamara, walked in. He stopped the fight and asked the man to leave. I can't believe you're throwing out a customer for this stupid girl! The man kept on cursing me and my boss. He even kicked two chairs on his way out. My boss called an emergency meeting and told all the employees that if that man is ever seen in this McDonald's, we must immediately call the cops. For the next two days, everything went fine until one afternoon. I got the call. Hello, this is McDonald's. What would you like to order? This is Officer Brad. Give the phone to your boss now. Oh, what? Don't waste my time, ma'am. I rushed back to the kitchen where Mr. Tamara was talking to a chef. Sir, there's a call for you. It's some police officer. Mr. Tamara attended the phone call. Mr. Tamara, are you the owner of the place? Yeah, officer. Has anything bad happened? We found circumstantial evidence against your employee, Roxanne. We believe the stolen item is with her right now, and we want you to search her. <laughs> what? Well, what are you saying? Roxanne can't do this. I know her too well. If you don't cooperate with me, I'll have to hold you as an accomplice and safeguarding a possible criminal. Search her now! Mr. Tamara looked at me with scared eyes. He called Betsy, who worked in the kitchen, and told her to take me to the ladies' room. What? What's going on? What did the cops tell you? They said we need to search you. You stole something and have it with you. I didn't steal anything! Mr. Tamara! The officers are wrong. Someone might have made a false complaint. I'm sorry, Roxanne. I have to do what he's telling me. I started crying as Betsy took me to the girls' washroom. I had to remove my clothes and use this black blanket to cover myself up while everyone ran through my clothes and underwear. This is all a mistake, I'm telling you. I didn't steal anything! There's nothing here, boss. 
Uh, officer, we searched. She is no such thing. You, you must have been mistaken. The poor girl's innocent. Shut up, moron. Tell her to jump up and down. I want to see if she stuck it inside her. Tell her now. Mr. Tamara immediately disconnected the call and dialed 911. The cops came and we explained everything. I couldn't stop crying when the cops told me it was a prank call. Whoever called Officer Brad was lying and scamming me. And the most horrible part was when the cops traced the number that called McDonald's. It belonged to that crazy YouTuber who we kicked out a few days ago. I left my job and cut ties with everyone after that incident. I hope I never see any of them ever again in my life. And to that fraud, lying, scammer, psycho, I hope you burn in hell. The story you just saw is loosely based on the disturbing story of Louise Ogborn, 18, who fell victim to the scammer while working at her local McDonald's restaurant in Mount Washington, Kentucky, in 2004. She was forced to strip and to perform sexual acts on the restaurant's manager during the three-and-a-half-hour ordeal. The mastermind behind the call had phoned the restaurant earlier in the evening, claiming to be Officer Scott from the local police department. Dad of five, David Stewart, was accused of orchestrating the bizarre and elaborate hoax. He was arrested. In October 2006, a jury found him not guilty due to lack of evidence. No way I'm going out with Jack. That dude is so messed up. You know what he said to Luna? What? He said he wants to lick her eyebrows. Ew, what the frack? Is that some new trend on TikTok? Yeah, pervert's TikTok, maybe. <laughs> well, what about Chris? He's handsome and stares at you a lot. I don't know, maybe. I think we need to sit down and decide which guy we should go to prom with. Cool. How about I meet you by the park in an hour? Works for me. Anyways, Dad's taking me grocery shopping. Okay, we'll see you then. Call me when you leave the house. I will. Kimberly, your dad's waiting. Mom, how many times have I told you to call me Kim? Kimberly sounds like I was born in ancient times. You teenagers are always living on the edge. Drive safe. Have a nice time. Um, Dad, can you please drop me off at the park on our way home? What will you do at the park alone? No, Betty's gonna be there. We're meeting in an hour. Okay, but does Mom know? Um, she will once you tell her after getting home. <sighs> Kimberly, you're gonna get me in trouble again. Remember how she gets angry if you don't come home in time? Dad, I promise I'll be home by six, okay? Six? You sure? Yes, Dad. Hey, what's up? Listen, I'm running a little late. Oh, okay. No problem. What happened? Nothing. Betty's on the way. Bye, Dad. See you later. Don't be late, kid. I won't. Hey, how long are you going to take? I'm at the park. Well, why don't you go for a stroll? It's going to take me a little time. Mom won't let me leave the house without cleaning my room. Ugh, mothers. So, are you going to wait for me? Yeah. Better than going home and feeling bored. Maybe I will just go for a walk. There's McDonald's at the end of the street. You can wait there. I'll figure it out. Just hurry up, okay? Thanks, Kim. (laughs) So funny. What a weirdo. Why the hell isn't he walking away? Oh, crap. Um... Hey, Mom. Kimberly, where are you? I'm meeting Betty at McDonald's. McDonald's? But you told your father you were going to meet your friend at the park. Kimberly, are you lying to me? Oh, God, no, Mom. Plans change. And Betty will be here any minute. Mom, I'll talk to you later. Parents, huh? Never stop nagging. Tell me about it. Um, do I know you? Not yet, but we can be friends. <laughs> Would that be bad? Well, I don't make friends with people my dad's age. Come on, we'll be great friends. You should come to my house. I throw parties all the time. Free booze and much more. (laughs) No thanks. I'm waiting for my dad. He'll be here any minute. But I thought you said you were here to meet Betty. 
Is Betty beautiful? You know, both of you are welcome to my party. Dude, just get the frack away from me. I don't want to go to your sick parties. At least give me your phone number. Come on, we'll have so much fun. Help! Help! Please, call the cops! That man is harassing me. Please help me. Okay, calm down. You're safe here. I'll call 911 and also the manager. Um, can you please come and get me? I'm scared. The story you just saw is loosely based on this CCTV footage found outside a McDonald's outlet. In this footage, a 14-year-old girl was harassed on her way to a friend's house. The man followed her and asked her weird questions, and even invited her to his house. The girl got scared and decided to run inside a McDonald's and ask for help. When the cops traced him, a report went to interview him. This is what the man said. This is the guy they're looking for. That's not me. It does, that's not you? Well, what are they looking for him for? Followed a 14-year-old in a McDonald's? I was just talking to her, and then she told me, um, she told me that she's young, and I told her, oh, okay, I was just trying to ask her. Hey, want to go to McDonald's? Yeah! Emilio was out the door before I could even grab my keys. Emilio, my seven-year-old son, loves to go to McDonald's. I hated the food, but I went there to see Emilio smile. So that one weekend, we headed for McDonald's. Emilio went on talking about which Happy Meal he was going to buy, which kind of shakes he was going to get, etc., etc. The moment we stepped inside the restaurant, I was blown away by the loud chatter of kids, laughing and crying at the same time. Mommy? Mommy, I want to go to the play place. We will, Emilio, but let's sit down first. Come on. When my husband Peter and I arrived at the register, Emilio ordered a Happy Meal and a strawberry milkshake and an ice cream cone. I just asked for a water cup. At a tiny booth in the back, my son started eating his food. I was watching him being so happy when a man dressed as Ronald McDonald came to our table. He was tall and lean and was sucking on a red lollipop like a kid. What a cute little boy. I'm loving it. Hey, Ronald. Well, hi, Emilio. Whoa, you know my name? I know all my friends' name. Are you having fun? I want to go to Play Place. Well, then what are you waiting for? Let's go. Emilio jumped out and ran towards the Play Place, following the clown. My husband yelled, Emilio, finish your food. Later, Dad. I watched him slide down the slippery slide and landing into the ball pit. And then I watched Ronald staring at my son. He was standing behind Emilio and watching him with a hungry smile. Mom, come here. My eyes shifted back to Emilio, and now he was going towards the tunnel. I looked back at the clown, and now he was looking at me from the play place. He slowly lifted his hand and gestured me to shush, putting his index finger over his mouth in a very creepy way. He then followed Emilio with an ear-to-ear -ear smile. Seeing Ronald following him, Emilio started to run. He screamed while giggling. You'll never catch me! Yes, I would! Emilio jumped into the tunnel, and so did the clown. Oh my god, Emilio? I screamed and ran towards the tunnel. My husband followed as well. I waited at the end of the tunnel to see Emilio, but I don't know why I felt my kid would never come out. Each passing second felt like an hour. And then finally, Emilio slid down. His legs peeked out from the end of the tunnel, but he wasn't moving. I thought something really bad happened to my son. Even Ronald didn't come out from the tunnel, which was extremely concerning. With shaking hands, I crouched on the floor and peeked inside. What I saw chilled me to my bone. Emilio was lying on the tunnel, and Ronald was watching him, sitting right near his face. I don't know how he managed to fit inside the tunnel like that, but he sure scared the crap out of me. I pulled my son out of the tunnel, and Emilio burst into tears. I started to panic. I thought Emilio must have blacked out or gone into shock or something because the next thing I remember was talking to the cops. My husband was right beside me and Emilio was in my arms. The McDonald's manager came out and told the cops. 
Uh, there's been a problem, officer. What problem? Uh, the guy dressed as Ronald McDonald didn't work here. Then what the hell was he doing near my child? Miss Rivera, please calm down. I understand what you're going through, but... Why wasn't there security to watch over the kids? My husband calmed me down, but I could hardly stop crying. The fear of losing your child is the worst in the world. I couldn't help but think how lucky I was to get my son alive from the hands of a maddening freak. The officers tore the place apart, but they couldn't find the man. Then they started asking questions to all the other customers eating there. But not one of them saw the man leave after I rescued Emilio from the tunnel. Everyone's eyes were on me and my kid, so the man must have taken this opportunity to run away. Cops later found a red, half-eaten lollipop outside the back door. No one knows who that guy was or why he decided to show up as Ronald McDonald in some random McDonald's. If you ask me, I think he was a psychopath getting ready to be a serial killer. But the story doesn't end there. After that incident, we stopped going to McDonald's. Emilio was so traumatized that he couldn't stand the red and yellow colors. He didn't eat burgers and fries for years. One night, my husband and I were watching the news when we heard about this kidnapping that happened at a McDonald's. The authorities said some man dressed as Ronald McDonald entered the restaurant and started playing with the kids. Some of the kids' parents got suspicious of his behavior. Moments later, when a six-year-old girl named Casey went missing, her parents got concerned. Immediately, Casey's mom thought about the guy dressed as Ronald McDonald and started screaming. All the customers started looking for the girl when one of them found her going into the empty, dark parking lot, holding the hand of Ronald McDonald. Father of three kids, Jeremy Morgan, is getting blessings and praises from the entire state of California. After saving a six-year-old girl from getting abducted, Jeremy has become the hero of the town. When our reporter asked Jeremy about this man trying to kidnap little Casey, this is what Jeremy told us. We were all looking for the kid when I saw her go into the parking lot with this weirdly dressed man. I rushed towards him and screamed at the man to stop. He stopped and turned back at me. He had evil in his eyes. Why do you think he dressed as Ronald McDonald? (laughs) Well, obviously, it's easy to get near kids that way. I mean, I have no doubt that this man has tried kidnapping other kids before. Or, who knows, maybe he had. I'm loving it! 